All right, see if everybody can hear you on that. I'm trying something different. All you got to do is just, you can put it lower if you want to, about right there. Hopefully everybody can hear you. Just test it. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? I was just showing that window. That's mine. Yes. Okay. That I got now. a new jet gadget today. So. That way, when you walk out, I can mm -hmm. still hear you. Because okay. what we have problems before is it was using the microphone here. And once you fade it away, okay. it would go out. So. Okay. Hello, hello. Nancy, Ed, Marilyn, Melissa. Missy, why didn't you just stay? <laughs> Space. I, want to make I had to come let my dogs out. <laughs> um, I, had to, I had to go get mine. I just brought him to the office with me. Oh. So he's he needs some training today too. So so uh, anyway, I thought the CE classes were good today. So you guys missed it. Uh, yeah, it was great. Andrea always does a good job. So uh, she's got a real estate school, and I think I talked her in today to moving it over here and having it every day. So, so uh, it would be a pretty good little addition to have here at the office. Miss Linda, how are you doing? I see you on. And I'm good, Randy. How are you? I'm wonderful. So everybody's still thinking about you. I got some cards and stuff on my desk for you. So uh, thank you for tomorrow and. The ones that brought cash, I just stuck it in my pocket. So I yeah. figured you would. <laughs> Chris got it before I did. So. <laughs> Opening cards and emptying them. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So you'll get the card out of the deal. So. Okay. Well, that's good. I appreciate those. Anyway. All right. Give me a couple of seconds to. It's been a good busy day. So, uh, and Tundra did an awesome job on her. As she always does. So oh, yeah. I just started my. Uh, so at least I've got three hours in on the move. So, so um, all right, I gotta share. Hey Randy, I thought um, the forms were gonna, gonna be connected to that email that Chris sent, but I did not see them. But they are in Brokerman yeah. or the new. Okay. Yeah, they're Sorry, in Brokerman. They're all there, and I Thank can you. go in there. Um, and uh, we can open a couple of them and look today. Um, we've got some coastal people in Huntsville, so they're all different. Um, we're going to just go over a few things and, and uh, let me get these open. Chris could play with me. Oh. He's just laying there. Okay. okay. Um, well, I get some of these things pulled up and share. share. Um, I'm going to over feedback, Chris. Could be. Let's look. So who looks like this today after uh, seeing all the new uh, forms and um, kind of going over it and, you know, what we're hearing is one thing and what we're seeing is something totally different. Um, I've kind of shared today with the, during the CE classes, you know, we've actually in Alabama, our buyer's agency agreement always said had a commission base in there. Our listing agreement has always said you're going to pay us five, six percent, and uh, we're you're authorizing us to pay uh, another broker to help us. 
So okay. we've been in compliance actually uh, for a long, I mean, long time. I, no. And Murphy, sit, sit down. down. Get over and sit right now. And so he's just welcoming some guests and a growl. So, uh, but anyway, I mean, we're really, guys, as we look at everything, we're doing, we're going to keep doing the same thing. But where we have failed our clients or our industry a little bit has been, we're out showing houses and doing real estate things. And we talked about this last week without sign brokers agreement or buyer's agency agreement. And, um, and that's what's got to really stop. And we've also got to make sure we fully explain. So when we do pull up the documents um, here in Birmingham, we've got the buyer's agency agreement, and then we've got the addendum to the buyer's agency agreement. The addendum says everything that the buyer's agency agreement says, but it just says reaffirming that you guys have explained to them what our buyer's agency agreement is. And so if we look at the seller side, um, I'm going to clear up a couple of things that we talked about last week because the uh, association, uh, the NAR settlement talked about, we, you know, you can't show a house without having a buyer's agency agreement. So the question was, if you're a listing agent, do we have to get that form? I was told they were going to upload it or have something. But then I was clarified, it was clarified to me yesterday that in the settlement and when audits happen, it's only going to be on the buyers and they'll come in and look at, they can look at your showings that you've set up. And whenever you set up a showing, they want to see a buyer's agency agreement in the file with those things. So Linda, you know, the, the, how we keep all that. And, and so you need to make sure if you just do a single house showing, uh, that you've got it uploaded into the system. And so that's one thing we're going to have to kind of talk about is how to keep up with this because, but as a listing agent, they're not going to come look at us and make sure that you guys have got a buyer's agency agreement that's on buyer's agency uh, agents only. Yes. Can you put on the um, agreement like Jefferson County or not have a bank address? Can I just put like state of Alabama if I'm covered or? Um, no, well, the buyer's agency agreement, um, and we can pull one up, um, it, it doesn't, you don't have to do it on a house or in a county. It's just once you, what the agreement says is basically there's the first line is kind of like, where do you, you know, where do you, where are you going to look and what are you going to look at? And and so really what that is, it's almost like they're putting us back in kindergarten and saying, hey, we want you to fill this form out and put this information in there to verify that you're talking to your clients. And because they're, they're just trying to make sure we, uh, we're putting in there that and listening to our clients that wants a five bedroom, three bath, that we're not showing them three bedroom, two baths and trying to push them to sell something. Uh, and so really on the buyer's agency agreement, um, let me open it. Still has a date and you can put a date when it starts uh, and a date when it ends. And so if these clients don't want to use you all the time, but they call you about one house, you can do it specific for that address and or just that day whenever you're meeting them and showing them you now why you want to do that. You know, unless you think, hey, it's just really, um, I think you got a pretty good shot at, um, let me see. Sales contract. Okay, sales contract. Buyer's agent. Yeah, sales contract. Okay. And so, you know, really what we're supposed to be doing is working with client, making these people our client. And so, and, and if they're wanting to buy a house and there should be a con consultation period with you talking to them, getting them pre-approved, finding out what areas they want to be in, what size home, do they want two stories, one story. And so I think a couple of things um, in there, there's exclusive agency agreement. Um, Okay, I'm sorry, I can't think and talk at the same time anymore. So, uh, so exclusive buyer agency just says the undersigned the buyer and then appoint you um, or a vast relative as the broker. 
real property description location buyers general description of possible suitable property so you can talk to them if you're going to sit in and consult you know, it's rare that you're going to sit there and have a client and you just go show them what you want to show them. You, you find out where they want to be, what school system they want to be in, what size home. Uh, I mean, because if you take, we had a little lady that we just did a pre-sale on in Mount Olive. Her granddaughter came and was pushing her to buy one of our bigger homes. And she's like, it's just me. You know, all I need is a smaller house. And so she wound up doing a smaller home. And, you know, I'm like, if she didn't have an agent and so i wound up being her action broker putting the deal together so i didn't have to do this but if she would have been my client i would have sat down and said what do you want i wouldn't have shown her a big house i would have shown her you know some of the square footage sizes uh but their thing was and is that uh she's selling a 4700 square foot house and they didn't think she'd want to go to 1800 square feet they were trying to get her in 2200 square feet and i'm like so, so that's our job in this is, is get a description while we're talking to them, what they're looking for, what's the location, what's suitable real estate properties. There's a term here, uh, it's granted, you know, from, from it's a start date and an ending date. And it goes through our services that we offer. Uh, it says broker and agent shall in good faith efforts perform all these services. So there's nothing really different in there uh, the biggest thing that's really we have to point out, uh, and you do need to go through here, but it's broker compensation. Now, this was on the old documents. This is not something new. They've, re they've made a few changes, but all along, you represent a buyer, and you need to let them know, hey, I charge 2.5%, 3%, 1%, whatever you want to do, it's a negotiable. One thing that will probably be, should be in all corporate documents is that's left blank. You know, no longer is a company supposed to say you've got to get 3% or you got to get one. And the listing agreement has got to be blank. And if, if you want to get 3%, 6%, whatever, that's your negotiation part and explaining everybody how, the, how you can still share the splits. And we'll get with that a little bit later on. But in here, you put in here, hey, you're going to pay me a fee. I'm, I'm working for you. I'm going to go find you a house. You're responsible for paying me a fee, either a flat fee or a percentage of whatever the sales price is. If we go back, look at the old agreement, it says the same thing. If it's a lease deal, you're still going to pay me a lease fee. Um, and so I think what's missing in here, yeah, there it is. It's not list, it was listed up in there. Um, because the problem in the old form that's really different, it says, I will only show you homes that the seller is gonna pay my commission. And so that had to come out, but it does say in here, if payment fees are offered by the third party, uh, broker agrees that if it receives fee or commission from the seller or seller's broker, the fee received shall be credited against the amount owed by the client, plain and simple. So if you're doing, if y'all agree to a two and a half, three percent commission, I'm, hey, LaVon, I'm showing you houses, you agree to pay me three percent, and we find a house they like, and they're only paying two percent, then you've got to point that out. Uh, and, and it really comes in on the um, net sheet, if you're sitting there putting a contract together, you net it out, and you show them that, hey, this is what it's going to cost you, my commission, you get a credit of 2%, but you still owe me a 1% fee. And so, uh, and so your option, and we're all pretty much trained negotiators in this. So I'm like, hey, from a buyer side, you know, one thing, first thing I'm gonna do is sit there with my clients, all right, you're gonna pay me three. I'm gonna try to find some listings for you where they pay me, but there's some listings out there that they may not pay, but we'll still make an offer and ask for it. Uh, or we can add it to the sales price when we make an offer list above because a couple of years ago, people were offering multiple offers, 20, 30 offers, and they're paying 10, 15,000 over. I even know there were quite a few that they paid up and said, hey, we'll pay our buyer's agency. And so buyers will do that. And so you can ask them, say, hey, if you want this house, they're not offering me anything. Uh, either you can pay me out of pocket at closing and or we can add it to the price. And we talked also last week where VA uh, will allow you to put a broker's agreement 
broker's compensation and the offering price. Uh, and I know Freddie, Fannie, Fannie Mae on conventional loans uh, have not finally approved it, but they're working on it just to work this little crisis out. And so uh, the, the fight that we have here is the Department of Justice is not wanting anybody them to pay us, just the buyer, uh, buyer itself to pay us our fee and not let it be part of anything. So that fight's kind of over right now. And why it's right now is they're watching us to see what happens. And so are we gonna behave ourselves and be good at all of this stuff? Uh, and if it keeps on, then they're just gonna come back and fight another lawsuit or jump in some things and just say, screw it, the, the seller or the buyer has to pay you. It's not gonna be in the contract or anything. But right now, that is not in there. So this agreement just tells them, which you go over, Hey, if we find you a house and they're paying, then that's all accredited to this document uh, that you, you agree to pay me to get out here. Now, when we get here, I'm going to ask the question, and the question's been asked at closing is from a buyer's, why did you just make $10,000? I did all the work. I found the house. I did all of this. And so with this or even a listing agreement, uh, and especially on a buyer's agency, we've got to start giving some really good examples of why we're going to earn our 3%. You know, the market, you're going to be their negotiator. You're going to work out their contract, make sure that there's a legally binding agreement that's held up by a court of law. Uh, and you're going to be there to direct them on doing inspections and doing all these other things. And so really you can sit there and prove that your values there. And I've sat there and seen some, uh, uh, situations where the the buyer's agent broker actually proved that by the time they paid three percent they were still getting in a house cheaper than they could have bought if they were just buying it on their own because of, there's things that they didn't understand uh, they didn't ask for closing costs they didn't ask for inspections which when the inspection comes back then they ask for repairs and uh, and so there's a lot of things in a contract that we do more than just get paid a commission just flat out. It's like, hey, our job is to save uh, our clients either money or prove a value that once they get to the closing table, everything's good. They've got a good home. We've got them a home warranty. We've got them inspections and got everything else that we could ask for. So, uh, so no longer can we just, uh, and I had a closing yesterday. I met the people at my neighborhood. They came, walked through the house. They liked it and, and they said they'd be back in touch. But next thing I know, I'm getting an offer from a, a, a realtor. And the problem was I had his name and his wife had not changed her last name yet. And so, uh, so when it came through with her last name, I didn't recognize it was a couple that I've already shown the house to. And they told me they didn't have an offer. This guy didn't do anything. And even during the course, he even screwed a couple of things up and, and I pointed out to she kind of got mad a little bit because there was a fence that they wanted extended and we extended it or the builder did uh, just like the contract said. And then she came back and said, well, I thought the fence was going to be all the way to the wall and then two gates. And I said, no, that's not what's in the contract. And I said, we did exactly what your agent sent to us and we agreed to. And she's like, well, he didn't do his job, did he? I said, well, that's between you and him. I said, I'm not saying or whatever. But he basically showed up and got a nice little commission check. Those days are fixing to be over with, if that's how you run your business. Um, we were talking today also is a lot of agents will call the new construction builder, D.R. Horton, Adams, or whoever, and say, hey, I'm sending my client over to look at a house. And uh, you know, if they like one, if you'll do a contract, just send me a copy of it. Mm -mm, not anymore. Uh, we talked about that in our new construction class is that, hey, Horton offers that and say, just send them over. We'll pay you a commission. I'm like, no, our job is to represent them, especially during the contract and explain the contract to them because a builder's agent works for them. And I tell everybody, why do you, if you're going through a divorce, would you actually pay your wife's lawyer to handle your divorce? No, you know, I want to tell the guys it's, and so that's the same thing. It's like, you want your own representation. And so, uh, so that's where some of the little things that we sit there and prove, but, uh, 
we're back in the day of times that we've got to get in a car and go meet them, show them houses, be there, represent them. Um, which what's going to make that hard is they see houses on our clients are seeing homes on the internet and like it, or you show them houses during the week and then there's an open house Sunday and they go by without letting you know uh, and call you, hey, I'm under contract, but I put your name on the list as my agent and all that stuff. Those things are not an act of you not doing your job. It's just them going out. And while you're doing this, just let them know, hey, if you go out and see a house, uh, you know, if it's open house, you're welcome to go in because it is open house. But if you want to move forward, give me a call and let me be there and represent you. Uh, so we just got to be on our toes a little bit more, probably a whole lot more, not a little bit. And uh, representing our clients, which is what we're supposed to do. Um, and I refer back to a lawyer again as you're going through a lawsuit and you show up in court and your lawyer's not there. You just tell the judge, well, this is what I want to do. And all of a sudden he slams the hammer down and says, this is what we're going to do. And then you call your lawyer and say, hey, I got hit for $100,000 today. Where were you? Well, I thought we had it handled. It's the same thing. You're sitting there dealing with somebody that's making a final decision. What's the conversation going on in there? So, okay. I do have a question. Go ahead. Um, language that's changing about commissions for buyer representation when it comes to builders are you seeing because i know like a lot of builders are always trying to get out of paying buyer commissions anyway yeah do you see a change with that tony like where they will no longer really even be trying to well, the, the builder's market, and I've said all along, I think that if there's anywhere that's not going to cut commission, it's going to be new construction because they've got everything built in. Uh, but I do think they're the liability of them of just paying you a commission because you sent somebody or your client went over there may change. They're going to look at that. that uh, and, and the whole situation is, is that when they're sitting at the closing table and that's the first time they've seen you, that you talk to them up front, they saw the house, did the contract, you never came to walk through or anything else and you show up to get your check. We talked today, some people were in there like, I don't want to pay her, she didn't do anything. You know, you're, they're sitting there saying you're getting 10, 12, $15,000 of their money. And so, you know, the liability up front, they gave me your name, Dara Horton, just using their name, put you on the contract. Uh, and so they still have to pay you because they authorized them up front. So you'll still get your check. But the new law is going to be is here, call this 1-800 number, call the state, uh, turn you in because you didn't do your services as a real estate agent. We're on the hot seat. I mean, we just are because too much of that stuff's been going on. So um, it really gets down to hardcore, get up your butt and go show houses, do what we're supposed to do, be there with your client and do a walkthrough and, and everything else. And so um, now what I can do and I'm supposed to do and I'm notorious for it is they call me, uh, hey, I want to come see it. I ask them, do you have a, uh, had a real estate agent? And they're like, yeah, but they're out of town. I'm like, okay, tell them to call me, you know, authorize it. Or if they're in, I'm going to say, and call them, tell them, set up a showing and come do it. The difference in me is I'm not on site all the time to where most of you builders have an on site agent. And so if it's more or less they have round the clock open house, then your clients can freely walk in. But um, they're supposed to walk in. And I think what you're going to see happen and change with the Hortons and the new construction is if you walk in open house and look at it and you tell them, hey, Chris Krill's my real estate agent. Uh, they're going to say, hey, what they should do is say, we can show you around, but before we sit down and do a contract, we need your realtor here. And so I think what's going to happen is before they'll pay you a commission coming down the road, uh, you're going to have to be there through the whole process and explain it to them. Yes, ma'am. Um, and uh, I'm going to just do this with two questions. But, um, and Mm -hmm. 
buyer. Mm -hmm. So the agent that is listed who works for the builder mm -hmm. calls her up. How can he be the buyer's agent? Well, that's what he thinks that they're doing. So the agent on duty claimed to be the buyer's agent? The agent on duty in the office, okay. they started this thing. The agent on duty becomes the buyer's agent. Okay. So they're coming there and like, well, no, I'm married. Well, I said, well, how are you going to do that? Yeah. Call the agent who's listed mm -hmm. as the agent. Call her. Okay. How are you going to do that? I said, well, he'll probably get some type of compensation from okay. my side. So the question was... Um, they had a client go into a house, just in case y'all didn't hear this, it's on Zoom. And so your client went in, there's somebody sitting there. Yeah, and so were you with them? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so the person holding the open house or sitting was not work, not, was not actually a builder. Didn't work for the builder. Okay. But so he that's, said he automatically. Yeah. So the laws change on that with open houses, and it's very clear through the NAR settlement is that if you host an open house, you are not the automatically the buyer's agent if they come in. And so uh, open house means the house is open, anybody can come and go. Okay, sorry, that just that clarifies something I've been seeing a lot through Facebook. Where okay. They complain about doing open houses. Yeah. They ask the people coming in, they were complaining that these people won't sign a buyer agency. So yeah. that just cleared, sorry, that yeah. was just kind of an aha. Yeah, so just because you're sitting in a house, and some of you guys, um, I haven't seen everybody sitting here, but I know some of you guys sit for Dr. Horton Adams' home, so just because you sit there, and if you show them that house, you're not automatically, yes? I want to clarify what I just said. Okay. He works for the builder as well. Okay. They hire agents, because I asked her, how okay. does this work? Okay. So they hire, yeah. So a lot of them hire, but the law's changing on that, that they can't come in and claim that, hey, they're my. So if you walk in, and the thing is, is you, next time you walk in, a situation like that is have your buyer's agency with you and just say, hey, I, I represent them. We're here to show a house. So open houses, either if you've got a listing and have an open house, or you've got somebody open, you know, sitting in your house, or if you're sitting in, somebody's house just because somebody comes and you show it to them and then they call me or call the builder and want to buy it direct um, doesn't mean you're guaranteed a commission uh, when you do a sitting like that for an open house uh, you're allowed to do that hopefully to be able to pick up somebody you know that comes through there and that's where again you sit there full disclosure has to be made that hey I, I sit here show it um, you don't have to go through me, but here's what I can do, you know, for you, make an offer. Uh, and again, if you call the listing agent, you know, he represents the builder, would have to handle you as a transaction broker. I can enter into an agency agreement with you and give you all disclosure. So just sell your value if you're there, uh, if you, those are sitting. But if you take your client into a house, there's no way they can make somebody else be the buyer's agent at that point. You're you're the one, you know, that's brought them in and want to do the contract. So, um, you know, so that the NAR settlement is very clear on open houses that you cannot claim somebody and be there and make them sign with you. You have to sell your off, you know, your your value to them and, and give them that opportunity. If they don't want you to be their buyer's agent, there's nothing you can do about it. And so, uh, but it's gone over to where people come in. It's like. You said, oh, I'm your agent. I got a, you know, I'm here today. You saw the house because I'm here. So I'm the cause of you buying this house. So I'm, I'm the one getting paid this commission. That's no longer in place. And so, uh, look, it, it's, there's some gray area, but there's some very clear black and white areas in all of this. No. I always thought it was like, you're there and just because they came in didn't mean that. Yeah, it's always been the same thing. So nothing's really changed, but NAR came out uh, with the settlement and that is black and white, one of the things that they're looking at at this point in time. And so it, I'll get back to some of the notes here, but 
what's going to happen in this? You know, there's been a lawsuit. Everybody, it's all been settled. And our settlement is, all right, this is what we're going to make sure we do. It's not something new we're doing, but we're going to make sure, sign addendums, and be very clear from this point on what we're doing as a professional industry. And so there's nothing new in, in our work market. Alabama's been doing this uh, for a long, long time, and so there's nothing new in this. And so um, what's going to happen with this is NAR settled this major suit for companies under $2 billion. And so most of your companies like us are under their umbrella, so we have to abide by their lawsuit. I was going to bring it up today, and then I told Tundra we forgot to get back to it. What's going to happen if they catch them doing that and catch us showing age, uh, buyers? If we sit there and set up a showing, oh, yeah, I've got a buyer's agency agreement, and you go show it, and, and you don't, and you get caught, all of a sudden, you're getting fined by the state. The Department of Justice is going to get notified. You're going to get fined by the association. There's one I'm going to talk about in a minute uh, that in California, they got fined $7,500. And, and that's just to start with. And that's just the state fining them. Department of Justice will look into it, see if there's a fine. And then at that point, you're out from under the umbrella. The shark, the shark lawyers that created this lawsuit, they're blocked from us right now because we've got that umbrella. But just as soon as you guys do something wrong, yeah. that umbrella is gone. They're coming after you. And so not only do you get fined, now these guys are coming and looking to sue you. And they'll sue our company and, and just say, hey, we don't have any, uh, you know, any control over you guys that we haven't taught you or whatever. That's why we're having classes to make sure everybody understands all this stuff. So this is more than just, hey, I, I'm going to be a... Um, Rambo here, just do what I want to do or whatever. This is this is big, serious business. So the only thing that makes me nervous, which it really doesn't, because I know our agents and we've been on a long time without any major issues. Linda's very good at catching and seeing things that, that may seem inappropriate and, and we put our foot down on it. So that's our job. Linda and my job and our staff is here to make sure y'all understand that we're here to help and, and do all this stuff so you don't get fined and get in trouble. Uh, but what we're also seeing is that there's a lot of realtors out there that's going to turn you in at a heartbeat if you're doing it. And so they're going to call because if they don't and somebody finds out they knew you're doing it, then they can get in trouble as well. And so um, don't let that scare you because the only time, and we've seen in and as we've been going in our past is that if you're doing something illegal but you didn't really mean to it was an, you know it's not a flagrant hey i'm just disobeying everybody we're all going to make mistakes and do something that we shouldn't have done you might get a little slap on the wrist you know we're going to step up and, and and protect you and fight for you and help you out or whatever else but if you're just out there flagrantly disobeying the laws and stuff, first thing that's going to happen is your license is going to go back and then, you know, uh, and stuff. And so at that point, we're not going to let you keep on doing it. If you do it once or twice, once really, we're going to, hey, here's a notice. You got to stop doing that. And so, uh, but, and Linda, you can chime on, but a lot of these things you guys have been very good at doing already. And so uh, what I don't know is that, because I'm probably guilty back when we were buying Zillow leads is I get that call and I go meet somebody I don't know and show them a house. And, and now that I think about it is I'm opening up a, a house with a bunch of valuables in it and showing it to somebody I don't have a clue who they are, whether they're approved for a loan or anything else. And so they could be going in there and seeing what valuables they have and, you know, and then later that night come back and say, you know, and, and rob them. I don't know who they are. Yes. So, so basically, in the broken, we're going to have a lot of contact with this agent. Because you got to upload the, so basically, I'm getting everybody's email address, all that, and putting them in a broken list to upload the buyer agency list. Yeah, well, actually. In BrokerMint, you're already supposed to be putting their email addresses and getting their information. Um, right. 
I really got to get with Linda. You know, if we're supposed to have those buyer agency agreements in place, um, Linda, I think the best thing to do if we got one and you set up a showing, set up a you know, you've got to now. I don't know, and, and Linda, we could talk about that. Is maybe there's a showing bracket instead of creating a new transaction because currently you have to go in and set up a new transaction on that address. And um, well, they can set up. The, under the client's name until they find the address they want. So, and, and let me interject just quickly here. I'm seeing a lot of um, new listing agreements under the new form, but I'm not seeing a lot of buyer agency agreements. So if you're representing a buyer out there and they haven't found a house and not under contract, we need a new buyer agreement um, in the file. So just reminding everybody about that. Yeah, any existing listings or buyers has to, you have to go have this conversation with them. Yes, sir. So are we still doing recast and the buyer agency agreement? Yes, you have to, yeah. Yeah, still doing recast and buyer's agency at the same time. And so, uh, look, uh, you yeah, can do a transaction broker agreement too. Yeah. I mean, if, if people are hesitant about the agency, then you can do a transaction broker agreement instead. That's just, you know, yeah. up to your client. Look, if you're sitting here doing this and you want to represent these guys, show them your value, most of you are going to be doing the buyer's agency agreement anyway. And so it's just like sit down with them. Um, and one other thing I was going to mention today, and I didn't because uh, the meeting got on and on, um, is if we're certain things we're doing, especially listings, and I got to say this before I forget it, is we were talking about pictures today of how sometimes you look at listings and the picture looks better than when somebody gets out there and sees the house. Um, if you're doing listings and I get, there's a lot of people doing a listing that's never seen a house. They hire a photographer to go take the picture. They've met the clients inside the office or at Waffle House or something and, and did an agreement, let me list your house. Uh, and then all of a sudden the photographer sends them photos and they upload it. And, and the photos look really good. It's on you. So you need, if you're listing a house, you need to go do a walkthrough. And so uh, uh, I'm guilty of that when I'm one in Alabaster that that I'm sitting there like, okay, when they told me I've got the listing and everything together, and then when I went to look at it, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a little tougher than I thought. And so, uh, and then when I saw the pictures come in, I'm like, okay, I got to go see this thing, man. And so, uh, but then also we talked earlier today about um, how we negotiate and like me, after I do a contract, it goes to Heather and she's my transaction coordinator. So if some negotiations go on and she makes a change in the contract and send, and I don't look at it and she sends it to my builder and he's initials it, guess what? It's, it's done. Uh, cause I've looked at some and I'm like, no, don't send that yet. And so, you know, cause she'll listen to what we tell her, but no matter, you can't go back and say, Hey, my TC made an error. It's been changed initial, it's in play at that point in time. So make sure before people send things out that you're, that you get a copy of it, you know, just like, hey, send it to me and, and to the, the buyer's agent and let's look at it and all that stuff. So uh, just so many things going on in here. I hate to bounce around a little bit, but I'm like, hey, well, I think about them. I'm, I'm so ADD. I got to say it when it's on my mind. So uh, Linda, do you have anything else? I mean, the buyer's agency agreement still is very similar um and so um yes i mean I, I they're all basically the same thing that we've been using i mean it just broken down a little bit more but um it's really basically the same thing yeah and so there's a buyer's agency agreement addendum uh, that i know that we have um here that says the same thing. Where is that addendum at? Uh, like the compensation no, there's an addendum. Oh, there it is. Yeah, brokerage fee disclosure addendum. 
so really this kind of goes over the same thing as who pays us. Um, look, at the end of the day, you need to be telling your agent, um, you owe me a fee. I'm going to work for you. I'm going to find you houses and negotiate, do all this stuff for you. You owe me a fee for doing this. You agree to pay me a fee for doing this. And one thing I'm going to help you with is I'm going to negotiate with the selling agent and in the contract for them to pay me that money. And so, um, and so we go over all of this. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I like questions. Okay. So my question is, when you do a listing group, aren't you already discussing what the commission is with the seller then? So how can it be changed later? Okay, it can't. So I'm talking broker, a buyer's agent side right here. And okay. so the question was, on the listing side, all that's already been discussed. We're talking buyer's agent, you talking to your client, a buyer. Okay. And so, so your whole thing is, is you're, you're, you're talking to your people, explaining to them the broker fees, mm -hmm. and you're explaining to them how much you charge. Mm -hmm. and, and then you also sit here and say, hey, I'm going to do everything I can to find a seller that's going to pay my fee. But at that point, you don't know what house they're going to like, whether it's got a commission or whether it does not have a commission paid on it. And so that's your next venture. Once you get this done, you start looking. And nowadays in the MLS, you don't know what they're paying. I mean, I think I shared last week, Chris and I looked at some, I found a 5%. I'm like, that's it. We're going to show that house. And so. Uh, they're paying 2.5. That's just what it is. Yeah. There's no point in me going back and forth. Can I get the legal? Yeah. No. It is what it is. Correct? Yeah. It is what it is. Now, your agreement, if, if their people say they'll pay you 3% and you get 2.5, uh, and I've had that battle with Keller Williams. They would send me a contract and says, you know, you've got to pay us 3%. And I'm like, no, we're paying two and a half. They're like, well, our contract says three. And I'm like, that's between you and your buyer, not right. okay. me. And so you can ask for it. And, uh, and so if the listing agent is doing two and a half, then they're usually, if they're paying two and a half, then they're usually getting two and a half. So they're going to be kind of offended that you think you're worth more than them. And so, so really at that point, if you get, find a deal and agree, and they agree to pay you two and a half percent, now I would really think you need to go back to the buyer's agency agreement with your client and change it and say, "Hey, we're going to take two and a half percent." That makes sense, Linda. It's almost like changing a net sheet. Is that you know, hey, this says three percent. You have to go back and just tell them, okay, we're good at two and a half, or you tell them in the disclosure in your net sheet. You can sit there and, and say they're paying me this much, but they're still uh, one half of one percent owed from you at closing to pay me. And so, uh, so with that, you need to put that extra into the good faith estimate closing because that's closing fees that they have to pay. Okay. Let's just try not to be greedy, you yeah. know. Yeah. The six percent stays with the bad. Okay, so yeah, we've got six percent on the listing side. Mm -hmm. uh, the buyer makes an offer, no compensation. Mm -hmm. uh, your client offered you six percent, and so that's between. I mean, that's really you. You can still collect the full six percent because look, it right now there's a lot of agents, and it's happened more at the beach that they'll get a two percent or two and a half percent commission, get it closing, and there was a seven percent commission. And you know, and I'm like, there, there's nothing in this that says they have we have to split our fee. Okay. And so um, uh, anyway, and I guarantee the question's gonna come in if you present an offer to your client, they're gonna say, Well, they don't want a compensation, do I get to pay you three percent, you know, whatever. So that's a conversation you can have. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I said that. Okay. Yeah. No. And I think I said today, last week when I did this, my understanding was that we have to either show, share it and prove, but then I got clarification yesterday that we do not. Yeah. You do not share your broker's agreement, buyer's agency agreement uh, with 
the buyer's agent or the selling agent. So, uh, uh, so anyway, that's just between you and them, uh, your client. So, you know, everything that's been, the laws has been written out here, uh, you know, it just said you must have that and disclose that you have a buyer's agent. And so I'm like, okay, if we're got to disclose it, then, you know, but it's just got to be a verbal, but it's better be in the file because examiners walk in, they're going to pull up. It's easy in the MLS, pull up, see how many listings, you know, they'll pull up a file and, uh, and see if, I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're going to pull up something and say, all right, um, you've requested a showing on this house and we want to see your buyer's agency agreement. Are you doing what you're supposed to? So, But even if we did have the provide proof of that buyer agency, could we just have redacted what they agreed to anyway? Yeah. No, we don't have to. I'm not going to answer. I'm just yeah, no, we don't have to. Yeah, we could have, but that's our personal information. So, uh, and then another question that came up um, from Al Smith, calling him out. But no, it's it's kind of like that, but on the opposite, that if a buyer agrees to pay you three percent in this agreement, and then the seller is negotiated. Then now Al goes out there and negotiates with the seller. He's going to pay you 4%. You can't take it unless your buyer amends it and says, hey, it's okay for me to pay you. So you can't negotiate and get an agreement with your buyer and then go negotiate for more money with, with the seller to pay you more money. Uh, now, if they're offering a bonus, then that's a different story because you didn't ask for it, didn't change, but you still need to go back on these, Linda, and correct me, but my understanding is, is that if we've got an agreement here that we're going to do it for 3%, then we need to let them know, hey, we're getting a bonus or, you know, that's just part of their program. Uh, because what we're, you know, what a lot of this lawsuit saw is there's buyers out there that they're paying X amount of money for a house and then they're seeing you get 3% commission plus X or 2% commission, plus, you know, all these things that some of these builders are doing. And truth is, they're paying for it because Horton's not giving anything away and neither is Adams. They got it built into the price. And what's really going to change this is I've seen some advertisement it from, I want to say Valor, is that we'll give you $10,000 for this or that um, or we'll drop the price. And so $10,000. So if you're sitting there negotiating with Valor or some of these builders for a little extra bonus or something, and then your client finds out that they could have bought the house for ten thousand dollars cheaper if you wouldn't have done that you know then you can get sounds it. like you're not doing your fiduciary exactly duty. you're not you're at that point who are you working for that's right yeah. and so you can't we're not in this to be working for ourselves and so uh so you, you've got to just disclose these buyers uh what you're doing out there so uh, it's got to be clear cut. And so too many little deals like that's been working under the table. Uh, and I'll tell you, Horton and all the builders offering that, I've even done it uh, to where we've just raised the price up $15,000 or whatever to cover buy downs and, and all these things. And so uh, uh, it's our job, if we can negotiate it down, happily get our 2.5% or 3%, get the price brought down, make a lower offer and say, hey, we don't need the interest rate buy downs um you know it, it's just and, and and i would sit there and highly recommend if you see a four and a half percent interest rate get with a lender and calculate what if we pay you five and a half six percent what's our payment instead of paying 350 for that house we can get it for 340 now what's the payments and uh instead of what's the payment at four and a half at the higher amount because Somewhere in there, it's all going to calculate out and be pretty close to the same. And so I would rather my buyer pay less for the money at a little bit higher interest rate. And then when the rates do come down, then they can refinance and get their payments down. And now they only owe 340 to where they would own 350 or 360 the other way. So they've got more equity. But those are negotiating things that we're supposed to find out, figure out, and help our clients with. Our job is 100% what we just said, representing our clients, either the buyers or the sellers, and quit looking at how much can we make on it. And so, uh, but you also, if you're going to serve, 
um, uh, serve some clients, man. Whatever you do and you work your honey off, they're happy to pay you. They're happy for you to get what you do. I, I had a couple of closings yesterday and all my clients were happy. And so, except one lady with the fence. And so I'm like, you know, but she wasn't mad at me or anything else we had done. Uh, they, everybody got what they wanted. I got paid, everybody got paid. The builders made money um, and nobody left there unhappy. So that's the way it's supposed to be. We do, we do our job, we make everybody happy and, uh, and protect our clients. And you know what's gonna happen? When they need to buy a house somewhere down the road or move, they're going to call you. And, uh, but if they sit there and see that you screwed them over and they paid 20,000 more than they should have so that you can get a 5,000 or $10,000 bonus, they're going to realize next time you didn't have their, their best interest on hand. So, uh, anyway, all right. Uh, anything else on buyer's agency? It's really, uh, you know, in this, most of the lawsuit was sellers having to pay commissions, uh, there's been a little bit of, from some buyer kickback and stuff, but you know the the addendum here almost looks like the uh, buyer's agency, but it's just you know it just highlights it the buyer's compensation, just making sure that the fees are disclosed in here and that they're supposed to pay it and what all of our options are. Any questions before I move over to listings? Speak now or forever hold your peace. So. Uh, all right, let me go back into library. I guess I can go up. Listing folder. Now, I will say this on contracts, uh, and let me go back to that because I did forget. Uh, brokered fee disclosure. No, we just did that. Where's the uh, broker's compensation is what I want. This is really the new document. I think it's probably the only new thing. Um, when you sit there and meet, you know, first thing that you're going to do if your clients want to see a house is you're going to call the agent and, you know, you set up a showing, then call and just say, hey, are you offering any compensation? Uh, and, or you can, my suggestion is to show the house first. If they like it, go show it. Uh, and if they like it, then call the agent to say, hey, we're going to make an offer. What compensation do you pay, uh, if any? Uh, and so by the time you negotiate your offer contract that you want to send to them, this needs to be with the offer, the broker compensation. Just says a vast realty listing broker acting through Chris Krill. Uh, listing agent represents LaVon Purdue. Um, boom, 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 and all this other stuff, and just says, you're going to pay us a fee of 3.5%, 2%. This is your document that proves it. If you send it and you don't talk to the agent about commissions and, boom, you get a contract signed and it sends it back, and then you think, oh, I need to ask them how much they're paying. And you call them, they're going to say, I ain't paying nothing. You didn't ask for a dime. And so you're out of luck. And so... Um, so this is your most important, if you want to be paid at closing, this is your document right here. And so, uh, and then if this comes in, say 1%, 1.5%, you got a 2.5%, 3% with your, your client, that's a conversation y'all need to have. Say, look, this is all they're going to pay. We've got an agreement. Um, you know, if you want to go back and counter at 1% or 1.5% higher to pay me or pay me at closing out of pocket, um, if you don't ask them for it, you know, their closing happens, you ain't getting no money. And so, uh, and, and most of this is in small claims court, so you're going to be sitting there drug out trying to collect money and all that stuff. And so, uh, just do your job, do the payment. Uh, just put in there that, you know, that you've got an agreement, the term expires, that your compensation, and all of this stuff. Now this is, you don't have to sign it. This is the listing agent and the listing broker. When they sign that contract, they'll sign this and, and the listing agent will sign it and get her broker to sign it. And, uh, or actually the broker just has to put their name on it and the listing agent will send it back in. And so, uh, uh, so there is a place buyer's agent. So, uh, so you sign it and send it over to them and now y'all got an agreement and boom, there's no more fussing, fighting, you collect your money at closing. 
So that's easy enough. That's a simple document. Again, don't wait till you send a contract and get accepted. Do it with the contract. The beach, the beach contracts, the language is in the contract. And we're really looking, and Linda had, and I hadn't talked, but I'm like, I really wouldn't mind changing our contract and put it in the contract. So that I agree with that. I agree with that. It's part of the agreement. Uh, I talked to Quentin Carter yesterday, the president of the MLS, and uh, I said, well, the problem is, is now it's tucked away in the contract. And he said, well, DOJ would rather it be in the contract because they don't like addendums. And so I'm like, okay, why don't they just go amend it and put it in? And so he and I talked about that yesterday, and they're probably going to discuss it and because they can send them a copy. And so, uh, so, but until then, this is our broker compensation agreement. Okay. I asked them to pay, pay 3% to one of the buyer's customers. Mm -hmm. Her seller comes back and says, I'll pay 2%. Mm -hmm. So now we have the 1% difference. Yeah. The seller is struggling to come up with his 3.5% back. Okay. He yeah. doesn't have that 1%. Yeah. So now Tony and I are going back and forth with, can we raise the price to come? So where does that all get changed? I guess it's an addendum yeah. to the original contract. Yeah. So the question was asked if you're a buyer's agent and um, and so, and that's really, yeah, you've got to deal. So all that happens before you go under contract. And so at first, when you call her, she says, yeah, we've got this and it's two and a half percent at list price. Now, if you go in lower than list price, then you're asking for negotiations at that point. And so, um, cause one of the deals I closed yesterday, we were a little bit under, we paid them 2% instead of 2.5%. You know, he agreed to it. And so, so if you send an offer based on them at 2.5, and, and if you send it at full price and everything else, or maybe you ask for more closing costs, then, you know, and then they can counter back. And the question was, what if they come back at 2% or 1.5? Um, well, your negotiations, one, at that point, you want to make sure you've negotiated for your client and not trying to be a show off. And, and win your, your client some money. Uh, meaning you let your client know, hey, I'm gonna ask for 10,000 closing costs and, and all that stuff in here, instead of just, hey, I send an, I'm gonna send it over 10,000 less. You let them know, hey, we're asking for two and a half. They said they would, but we're asking for more closing costs to help you out. Then if we do, that may, they, they could come back and offer less or once it comes back, you can go and say, well, we asked for closing costs above what they may have had in the contract. So it, look, the, we're negotiators, and so you're going to have to negotiate on it. Yeah, put it in the addendum uh, and just make sure everything is, is disclosed. Linda, did you get that? So, okay. I'm I did, gonna, yes. So broker compensation agreement, get it signed, send it in. Um, and so now I'm gonna jump over to Stephen Jonins. I'm putting him to sleep. So I'm fixing it. I'm fixing to dance a little bit or just. Hey, Randy. Yes. I have a question. Okay. How do we ever, how do we put in there, like if we wanna pay an agent a fee to bring someone, you know, like a bonus? Yeah. How do we do that now? You can't. Um, oh, okay. Nothing to do with commission splits. The only thing that you can put in is concessions for closing calls. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff. Okay. Uh, but now we're fixing to get to that on agency listing agreements. Um, and what I taught okay. last week, um, I did get something because I had said we can advertise on social media. Uh, and I think some other, uh, somebody was at another training class and said it in that one they said you cannot just you know you can't put your commission anywhere else the law says we will not publish commissions in the mls's it doesn't say mm -hmm. we, can, we can do it on facebook we can uh, run it on our website or whatever else but the question i have is why you know why do you want to disclose so what you can put in the mls 
and I'm going to shoot the language over to Linda and we'll shoot it after y'all. But it, you can put in the notes is that seller is acceptable to offers and uh, commissions. You know, you just can't put how much is in there. And I'll get y'all that correct language. Uh, so you okay. can't put in, language, in the remarks that there is, you know, that the, the, the seller is willing to work with, you know, whatever. And so, um, uh, but besides that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if we're sale by owner, put we'll advertise, hey, we're willing to pay a commission. So we can do this in the MLS in the remarks, but you can't put the amount in there. And now, mm -hmm. so the exclusive listing agency is different a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, because again, all along we've put in there, hey, we're going to buy your, we're going to help you sell your house, put it in MLS. And uh, Stephen, I got a Red Bull in there if you want it. And so uh, it's uh, so yeah. So anyway, and so here we've got to negotiate with our seller, uh, net them out, and see if they're going to let us share commissions or not. Um, you know, the thing that we've got to do and the question was asked several times today is uh, if if you get a seller uh, and I shared with our training class today is that uh, I was in Tampa last week and I was watching the news and there was a special on the changes. It was Saturday the day it started and Tampa News had this big uh, news article that, hey, no longer do you have to pay buyer's agency agreements. And so now your commission should be 3% less and now you can get a house for 3% cheaper. I mean, they were just pitching it that, yeah. that it's gone and it's not gone. And so they actually had interviews of a couple of agents down there and somebody with the MLS. And I'm like, somebody didn't do a good job explaining them, you know, and, and somebody that got on camera should have said, well, that's not true. But, you know, so the problem is that they interviewed these people then they came up with their story and took the clips out that they wanted to and so they didn't explain it so the problem is is that on social media news everything else is that words going out that hey there's a lawsuit this happened and now um, you don't have to pay a buyer's agent and which is true but before this happened you didn't have to buy pay a buyer's agent so nobody's ever made anybody pay anybody it's just been all part of the deal, part of the negotiations that we've had in there. And, and uh, so now there's more and more people out there. And I showed a house to some people and they're like, uh, they did. It's one of my new constructions. She's like, well, we're not going to use the agent. So we get 3% off the house, don't we? And no. I said, well, no, not necessarily. And so, uh, but, you know, I always offer, you know, hey, come on in, let's work, see what we can do. And. Uh, and so my question on everybody antsy about advertising what your commission is that you're going to pay, why do you want to do that? I mean, it's, we're negotiators. You're, you're throwing your hand in on uh, how much you can give up. If you really want to make more, like Tony just said, you've signed a contract at 5% or 6%. Um, why are you going to tell them, hey, I'll give you half my money? You know, just sit there and say, hey, we will share, you know, we will pay a percentage upon agreed to contract. And so, um, and I'm one of those, there's people passing notes here. I want to say that, bring that note up here to the front of the class right now. So, <laughs> it says Randy doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. And so, <laughs> I just, I was like, I heard the term unalived. Yeah. Oh, uh, did I say unalive? No, so, uh, no, no, okay. no, no, You said something else that was in reference. Oh, uh, right? okay. So, uh, <laughs> and so, so uh, it, was a, it was just why you have to use unalive. So, I'm just like, um, <laughs> why are we so anxious to share that? You know, I'm like, let them know, hey, yeah, we're paying. Uh, and just, you can sit there and say, hey, depends on the offer that comes in. You know, we'll look at it, and then my, my client will do that. I, I actually had a commercial deal had a 10% commission on when we put it in MLS we did a 1% and we did that because kind of figured somebody's gonna come in and just claim something sure enough we met with the buyer 
Uh, and I think I shared this the other day. I met with the buyer, had the deal put together, and then get that phone call from some agent that didn't have a clue, didn't do commercial. She says, hey, I rep represent so-and-so. And I said, well, we're already under contract. And she said, well, he wants me to represent him. I said, well, fine, he can pay you. And uh, she said, you're not paying anything? I said, well, we got 1% in the MLS. And, and so we talked, and she said, oh, that's fine. I'll do it for 1%. And so if you got 6% on your side and you got a buyer's agent, you know, you can tell them there's nothing in that. This listing agreement says, hey, I got to split it in half. So if you've got a hot house. That was my question. There's nothing in the listing agreement that says, it's in the agreement to pay X amount. Yeah. Right. yeah, up to X amount. And yeah. so, uh, so it doesn't say exactly X amount. It says up to and so or a flat fee and so here it is yeah. seller agrees um, it's never been it's never said it's an even split yeah yeah so it says for for finding a buyer ready, willing, and able to purchase the property upon the terms here and mentioned or at any price upon terms acceptable to seller, seller agrees to pay broker a fee of X amount. Uh, and it says seller agrees that broker may engage other brokers to assist in marketing the property and may share its brokerage fee. And then it says seller agrees or does not agree that you can pay a portion of the brokerage fee. Um, and so it just says you can. And so now they can also limit how much you're going to pay. Uh, you know, they can say, hey, I only want you to pay 1% or 2%. But really, the language. No, it says up to. I don't know. If it, from here, Linda, am I missing something? I don't think it says. It says I have to come back up. Come back. Right. Stop. Right there. Okay. So like seller, then you got the two squares. And then if seller two agrees, two then such amount paid to a broker representing the buyer shall be blank unless otherwise agreed in writing signed by the seller, broker, and the buyer's broker. So, um, so anyway. What you could do is put shall be up to yeah, 3% up to, or up to 2.5%. Uh, 2.5%. Yeah. So just up to. And so now. That's your wiggle room. You've already negotiated for you. You got a five percent or six percent listing agreement. There's nothing in here that says splitting that makes you a dishonest person. I mean, you're you're splitting it with another real estate agent that's probably not doing half the work you're doing or whatever. And so, to me, where this really is is if you've got a house in a bad market that is hard to sell, then you may want to do three percent. But if you've got a hot area that you know, there's, I just sold one in Westchester over in Forestdale. I'm like, hey, I'd put 1% in there again, you know, if I did it, because I know I, it a sell day one, I got two offers and, you know, I'm just like, it went above uh, list and stuff. And so, uh, so that's your negotiating. That's why you don't want to publish it. Don't put out there, hey, if the agent calls and says, yeah, we've got, you know, uh, she won't let me disclose how much we'll pay. Just send us an offer and we'll look at it. And if it's acceptable, I'll give you a feedback. Now you're going to get a little kickback, but you know, or if you want to and you're in there, you can say, hey, we'll pay 2%. And so you don't have to say the seller's only let me pay 2%. So negotiate. That's where you can make some money. And uh, because the seller has agreed to pay you. So this is the one greedy area that you have in this whole deal. Agreed, Linda? We can say it that way. Uh, that yeah, if we must. <laughs> Yeah, if you must. And so, uh, look, you know, it's, um, that's okay. If, if your seller is taking, you know, if you're agreeing to a price below list, I mean, you, know, yeah, you want to pay less list. commission and maybe help the seller a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, I took a hit yesterday on one, so, but I made it up when she bought it. I that. saw that. Ouch. Yeah. So, uh, but she also bought that house that I had double commission on, so so I uh, made up for it. So, but I still well, you didn't mention that part. <laughs> I did today when. No, you didn't mention uh, the part about the double commission. Oh yeah, I had both sides on you it. Said you took so. zero, you took a hit, but then. Yeah. yeah. So my wife was here. I wasn't going to. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. 
Me and Dad are the part. Yeah. So, okay. So listings. Um, I'm telling you, this is where fines are already going out. Uh, California started already. Uh, association started early. Uh, they weren't waiting until the 17th. A lot of associations have. Uh, but one, I read up and one fine that I saw, um, and I just hadn't figured this out. A guy in California listed a house in the MLS and they put a drone footage, went from the front of the house around, flew up over the backyard, and in the backyard they had taken a lawnmower and cut 3% in the backyard. Uh. Swear to God. It's, you know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. And then in notes, um, I've seen to where, huh? the, they, they flew a drone on this house, went up in the air, over the backyard, and the backyard had had, they cut the grass and put a 3%. So now they're flying over, there's no language in the listing. But if you watch the video, you see 3% thinking nobody's going to watch that. And so, um, and we asked, the, the question was asked today for all of y'all that were here. Um, you guys that are on, some of you were, but who's going to find out? You know, who's going to find out? Agents are looking in there, and they're going to call, and they're going to say, hey, so-and-so's doing this. Y'all don't let me do it. They're going to rat you out. Brokers are going to rat you out. And so um, you're not going to sit there and say, well, the Department of Justice only has two or three people or whatever. There's 5,000 real estate agents here in Birmingham or roughly is going to be looking and finding it and they're going to call somebody. So uh, just do not do it. It's not allowed. Don't even play with it. Um, and I would, you know, I said a while ago, we can put a language that seller will. Um, I don't know that I would even do that. I would just say, hey, call, call listing agent for details. <laughs> Make it be a phone call, everything outside the MLS. Um, and so, you know, and if you want to put it in the Facebook or put it in a website or something else, you're giving up information. I mean, and that's what the whole suit was. Department of Justice thinks that's wrong because now you're tipping how much money they can make and drawing some agents over. And I'm like, oh, that's the way we do business. And so, uh, you know, anyway, but. They didn't like it, so we've got to abide by it. So don't even flirt with the fence. Don't, don't. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> don't let you finish the thought. But, okay, new construction. Okay, you've seen uh, companies sending or calling you or texting you and telling you, we're going to give the client this and we're going to pay you 5%. Okay, yeah. As long as they're calling you, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the question, and we kind of talked about it a while ago, is the we get texts all the time from Horton and these builders saying, "Hey, bring them. You get five percent." You also have, if you're in their club, you know, you sell two houses, and now you move up to an extra bonus point or whatever like that. Yeah. So the deal there is, is you've got a friend um, that that calls you and says, "Hey, I want to see." a D.R. Horton house or see a house and you can sit there and say, the way I would handle it is, you know, man, you, you got to see this D.R. Horton. There's nothing wrong with taking them down there and showing it to them. And you can say, hey, even if you do that, our buyer's agency agreement, you owe me nothing because the, they're going to pay me a fee. And so now uh, they don't have to pay you, but then they put notes that you accept commission from the seller. And so Linda, not trying to overstep, um, because we kind of talked while ago, if you do a 3%, if you enter into this at 3%, you find somebody's doing five, now you've got to get their approval to pay that. And so really, if you do have that, take it. Uh, the seller is pretty, the buyer is pretty much not going to care, but you want to get an addendum from them saying, we're okay with you receiving 5% from, from them. But what happens when they find out that you're getting 5%, they may say, hey, we'll use, 2% of that to help me with some closing costs or something. But the good buy thing. Buy me a refrigerator. Yeah, buy me a refrigerator. Good. The good thing is, is they're offering buy downs, 10,000 closing calls. Shutters, blinds. Yeah, so they're offering, you know. Offering a whole deal. And we're working on a couple of Mercedes. We got a few houses that we can't sell. So we're still 
waiting on a Mercedes to be delivered, and, and so, uh, so. Say what? Uh, are we the only organization? Yeah, because we're the. reason I say that there are other people that have businesses that go out and say, okay, Mr. Brooks, I'm charging this to get this job done. Yeah. And you say, okay. Yeah. You agree to accept that. And then he goes back and pays two or three of his work. Yeah. It's the same concept. It is. No, we're, we're, our, our industry was specifically picked out targeted. in this targeted. Uh, mainly because our volume dollar per deal is so much higher than if it's a car salesman or something else like that. And so, uh, uh, and the, the advantage of most of those other industries are they're selling inventory. So if you don't like what's being sold at Long Lewis, you can go down here to town and country, you know, you can bounce around and, and negotiate on the same identical product that you can't do in the housing. You know, there's only one house sitting in, uh, Liberty Park that you love that's for sale and they're not making more of those so you can't wait on a new model so uh, so the mortgage industry got hit um, five six years ago with a similar thing and so and so uh, they've all had a change and I was part of that and and uh, and all disclosures and how much they could charge because you know a mortgage guy could sit there and take your loan application uh, you're Credit score 620, so they're pricing you certain rates, and uh, which they can still do, but they can't charge you. Um, all they can do is charge the rate from the investor, so it's the investors buying the loans. But used to, I'd get a quote, somebody say, okay, uh, you charge them six and a quarter, and so and now at six and a quarter, I'm making a one percent fee off of that, and so now I'm selling it to you for six and a half, just because. Uh, you're you're buying a two hundred thousand dollar house instead of a five hundred thousand dollar house. Uh, so they came through and changed that to where the mortgage industry, you have to whatever you offer and what you make on one deal, you have to make. So your uh, your scale has to be across board. Uh, and so their change, you know, it went through and was pretty rough. Took a lot of people out of the mortgage business. But they're by, it's just part of everyday life now. And so, you know, and then they had to disclose because uh, a lot of your, your buyers would get a good faith estimate from the lender. And then at closing, you know, the lender is like, oh, we're $2,500 more. So now with that same Graham and Rudd or whatever it was, act, uh, they have to be within like 2%. If they quote you closing costs, they can, and if it winds up being more than what they quoted you, they've got to pay for it. And so, yeah, their industry's been hit as well. Uh, bank industries get hit as well, the banking systems and everything else. So um, our good old government's involved trying to help us out more. So, uh, uh, but again, it pro supposedly protects the consumer. Uh, out of this, consumer's not gonna save 3%, even if they don't pay a buyer's agency agreement. Um, it's still gonna be, or the buyer's not gonna, make the three percent or whatever extra or get it cheaper houses are still going to keep going up and so uh, cost of materials for new construction still going up and uh, the, the the market's still not saturated so somebody said hey it's getting to be more of a buyer's agent uh, a buyer's market and I said no it's still pretty much a seller's market right now in certain areas but with the interest rates um, you know, it, it is, you got to find the right buyer that wants to come in. Buyers are still being pretty savvy and making offers on houses and saw one uh, down in my neighborhood. He took 50000 less and I didn't think he should have, but he had already built another house, moved in it, and his was vacant. And I always tell everybody, don't do that because you're going to wind up taking fifty to 100000 less just to because you, you're tired of two house payments and stuff. So... So exclusive agency, my online people are very quiet today, um, <laughs> but you know, it's all the same. There, there's really not much left in here. Uh, there's a little bit more break breakdown on them signing extra places, but you do have to go in and disclose this, have this full conversation with them. Now, you know, a lot of today was gonna be, what if my, my seller says, I'm gonna give you two and a half percent. That's it. And so, what's your job? 
I mean, your job is to do what she says. You can sit there and say, look, I'm fine. I'll put it in the MLS. We'll market it that way, but expect a contract asking for commissions. Um, or, you know, we can, when we get it back, we can counter back with the higher price if we're covering that. But you also just let them know, um, look, there's all these other agents out there, this buyer's agents, and they're, they're probably not going to bring them and look at your house if they're not going to get a commission because all these other people are going to pay a commission. Um, you can suggest that, but, you know, you can't sit there and say, I'm not going to take your listing if you don't pay it. Uh, your job, you, you, you do not deny a listing on a house because of that. Don't say that. And just say, well, I just don't think it's in my best interest to take your listing at this point. But I would take it in a heartbeat and put it on at two and a half and then negotiate with the buyer and work your way out. You're still going to get paid. And, and uh, look, I'm one of these that the houses down here are the million two. Uh, I would just stop take one percent fee all day long. You know, I'm going to make ten, twelve thousand dollars and or if I make two and a half percent on a little house over in Central Park or something, I'm like, I'll make four thousand so and do twice as much work. So all day long, it's all in negotiations and, and there's a lot of these agents that's just stuck in mud. I'm gonna I'm gonna list it for five and a half or, or six and I don't even want to get out here and, and try to sell it because it's just gonna settle on the market. I'm like, give me a call. I may run an ad. Hey, if your broker, if your listing agent says he won't take it you know at three or two and a half call me i will and so uh, uh but i don't think many people are going to do that you're going to have some our job is to educate our clients um, and you know you guys can pull up enough information that's in the mls uh, or in emails from inman and tom ferry and all these other things about this and just share it on facebook page and try to um, educate the people of our value still because I think every agent that we have brings value to the table, either negotiating as a buyer or negotiating as a seller. And so uh, there's a lot to be left on the table if they don't use us. And, um, you know, and I, I said earlier today, hey, when multiple offers were coming in, which we still see some, I had two in one day, wore me out having to do two seller net sheets and, you know, send it to them like, hey, but I've had 10 before where you're sitting there all day now, what would a seller do? They wouldn't have a clue uh, because one of my offers came in. We listed at 278.9. First offer came in at 282.9, but they wanted 3,000 closing costs. So I'm like, okay. Uh, the other one came in at 289.9, but they wanted 9,000 closing costs. And I'm like, well, by the time we worked it together, the cheaper house had a better net. Uh, but then I also knew that the higher price wouldn't appraise. And so I'm just like, hey, what's going to happen there? We're not going to get it. Uh, but anyway, we wound up having an appraisal problem anyway, which I argued with the appraiser and the lender. But we still got it sold and, and the net came out pretty good because once the, the offer came back, we negotiated, took all the closing costs out, the warranty out, and, and adjusted the seller's agent or the buyer's agent. So a client netted out probably four thousand dollars within what my original offer you know to her net sheet was and so uh, of course i took a little hit on it but you know you just have to sit there and negotiate on it and work it out um, our contracts are not our problems they're simple um, just make sure you add them make sure you disclose to them the main thing here is do not show somebody a house without a buyer's agency agreement we said last week go to broker man Pull these things up and print them out and put probably three packages together, put them in your car, have them at all times. Get the recads. You've got to recad them the, the day you sign the listing agreement and the uh, buyer's agency agreement. Uh, just do your job. I mean, do what we're supposed to do. Do what you've always done. Um, just got to do a little bit more or a little quicker, I guess, up front. They're passing notes, so I'm going to make sure my language, I say it properly, so I don't get criticized here. And so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, anyway.
Yeah, there is also, yeah, the additional form is the addendum, um, buyer sales. So the question was, what's the other form? So here we've got a blank addendum. Make sure we use those. But brokerage fee disclosure addendum to buyer's agency agreement. That's something we're having to use now. So you've got the uh, buyer's exclusive. It's broker fee disclosure addendum okay. to buyer's agency agreement. And if we go back, huh? that's, that's current buyer's agency. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have a listing and no contracts, print these out, get with your clients and go over, you know, tell them, hey, because uh, what you don't want to do is get an offer tomorrow and go and they're going to say, well, I thought I had a right not to have to pay somebody. And if you don't disclose it, then you can be in trouble. So we've got to go back, redo our documents and, and uh, I'm going to sick Linda on you. If, if we don't, we'll have to go through an audit, but y'all please do that. And, and uh, uh, what other questions do we have that I can do? Um, you know, Randy. I'm, Randy. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, go ahead. I, 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 so everybody here could hear. So, go ahead. Um. So I thought that on the new exclusive buyers agency agreement, that because that one's in place, that addendum is all a part of that one document, which is four pages. So we have the four-page agreement, mm -hmm. and we've got the two-page buyer's addendum to the agreement, which should just be one page. We can, I think we can go delete a few lines and pull that buyer's agent signature in. Yeah, we can pull it up. It'll take make a little bit of work. Make it 1%, one percent, mm one. -hmm. So no, we need addendum. So you got to do right now six pages or hopefully we can get you down to five. So the addendum, the addendum is says, I understand that I signed a buyer's agency agreement that has this information in it. So there's an addendum. So they sign it, they initialed it, and then they sign something else saying, we know, you know, we this. so it's overkill. You get in the court of law, you can't have too many addendums. I, you know, I'm just, I hate it, but um, everything here in the settlement is to protect us. And our job is to protect you and keep you out of trouble and teach you how to do this without getting into trouble. And so um, that's all we're doing. So to print two extra documents and get them signed, um, to me out of all this, that's the worst thing you've got to do really is just do that and get them signed and make sure everybody understands the new thing. So, so. Uh, if we amend that, that disclosure fee, the one the two pages, the one page, do we have to get it like, signed off on from an attorney? It's all the same thing. You just have to, um, Yeah, I, mean, I guess I maybe I missed maybe my question wasn't really clear. I just thought that um, the addendum was in place until we finally got the documents that were mandated. But I, it looks like it was the same verbiage for me over and over again. But I'll do what asked. Now uh, they're all they all came out at the same time. They have the same dates, mm -hmm. and so that. That was not some of these were already released, but then they were not officially approved by the association uh, the until. Were yeah, and so we did have some Alabama Real Estate Commission um, documents in place, and so uh, they're out of there at this point. Some of these says okay. approved by the Greater. Yeah, there these are all agreed wow. by. The, and look, if we ask a question, and I've been asked this, um, is you know the state offers certain documents and they came out first with uh, with their documents and um, and I'm like Chris that's the two-page form like if there's some way we can just pull that up well, like right there if we can I, delete that, if I, if that, does it have to be approved? no it's all the same thing it's just one page okay. and right. so uh, yeah you can pull up one line and stuff there so uh, so yeah, the addendums are all in there. And what I was fixing to say is, um, why are we not using the state Alabama Association documents that we just incorporate in all of our branches? What the Greater Alabama MLS offers us as real estate agents, that if we're using their documents, there's some legal help, that if we get into a legal 
issue with clients uh, and we're using their documents that they fight for us. They're going to sit there and help us with all legal aspects. Now, if we use outside agreements, um, say somebody from Montgomery or Tuscaloosa sends us one of their contracts and we close the deal, there's no help from our association uh, in negotiating or settling out issues. Um, in these agreements, it, it agrees to go to arbitration, uh, and that's where the MLS steps in and looks over a lot of the, you know, the things and stuff like that. And so that's why we've got documents in Greater Alabama, which is Birmingham, and using the MLSs in the different areas they are. It would be great to have them all in one uh, across the board, but it's just that extra protection that we give you guys while you're out there negotiating and doing stuff because... I'll remind, I say this probably every time. What's the most ads and most billboards you see while you're going around in a day? Call me Alabama. Call me Alabama. Some lawyer, and, and it's, you know, they're looking, look, they've got to pay for those ads. So they're looking for lawsuits. They're looking for, you know, most of them are major injury just so they can get a simple insurance. Uh, but we're a simple insurance lawsuit too. I mean, we got E&O insurance and Boom, they know they can pop us and get 10, 20,000 pretty quick. And so, as we try to make sure everything we do keeps us legally bound uh, and protected from you guys, you know, for you guys. So, um, that's where we are. Any other questions out there? I want to go back to business and trade. Okay. So, I have negotiated deals got all of my documents signed with my buyer. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah. So the question. So the question, if y'all don't hear, is that she's got a contract with her buyers at two and a half. She goes to a builder and they're offering five percent, and we do a contract. Uh, to you know, one we go and say, hey, good news, you don't have to pay me any money. It's worked in the deal. Uh, but nowadays, part of the settlement, you cannot collect more than what your buyer's agency agreement is with your buyer. So if they say, uh-uh, I want that two and a half negotiated on my benefit, then most of them are going to say, well, you know, because really it's, it's a, you know, it's an inducement to you to bring people over there or whatever. And so uh, you can only accept it if they agree to change it, you know, in there. And so uh, our roundabouts are, hey, I got you a lower interest rate, all these other things, and they're paying me a bonus. Are you okay with that? Oh, sure, you got me a great interest rate, is where they should be. Some are a little savvy. They may say, hey, split it with me. And uh, so that's your negotiations. But you cannot do anything once we're under contract. Um, yeah, and so I, I keep re responding to lawyers, but if you got a lawyer and he says, come says, hey, I got you a settlement for $100,000, and oh, that's great. And you had to agree to pay them 10%, and then you find out they paid them an extra 100000 bonus to settle it. You're going to be unhappy because he should have only made $10,000. So same thing. They, they think in this deal you're negotiating, you're going to work off of a $10,000 fee, and now you're getting fifteen, eighteen thousand. 18000 The math starts ringing in their head. Some are going to be okay with it because it's part of the deal that Horton offers. Horton yeah. But can she take the commission from DR Horton and tell the buyer there's no charge? Here? No. We've entered to a contract with them at two and a half percent. So what you've got to do is get their permission for you to accept the full five percent. The, the buyer has to approve it. And look, how you present it is look, DR Horton offers. You know, I'm going. I'm going in here. I'm getting you ten thousand closing cost. I'm getting you a four and a half percent interest rate, and they're giving me a bonus. It's just the way they've got it built in. Now I said something earlier. There's some builders running that same ad, but they're saying or ten thousand off the sales price. And so where Horton won't do it, and I won't do it, is I 
just killed my comps. I've got a comp $10,000 cheaper or something, you know, if I don't do that. So if I'm going to do it and I've got the prices built up, um, I've sold some, and I just do a $10,000 credit or something like that, but it's in the sales price somewhere in there. And so, uh, so it all has to be explained. So all about Well, Linda, I mean, Ken, will, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, right. That's where you use your your Spanish writing. Just put it. I can accept. Now, I think you can go in and and look again. Everything's being upfront with your clients to say, hey, uh, you could probably and Linda, correct me here if you put in there, you'll pay me three percent. And if you know there's a broker, you know, somebody out there, go ahead and put in there. Or if I show you a new construction home that's paying more. Um, I don't think you uh, can do that. Okay. What you would need to do is fill out the brokerage fee disclosure amendment to the buyer agency agreement. Yeah, that's what That's doing. another form. She said, do it at three and do an amendment form and get them to sign it. She's no fun. So uh, <laughs> you don't like to look at every writing on a contract. So <laughs> have to have spy glasses to see it. So uh, yeah, <laughs> you're a bad person, Linda. Just run. Everybody's fine. No. Hey, Randy. Hey, Randy. Yes. Hey, I've got a quick question. So I have got a new construction um, that the agent agreed that a two and a half percent commission would be paid to the buyer's agent. And this was back in April. Mm -hmm. Would the, would the builder have the right or option at this point to renege on that? No, it's already under contract. You're under contract. And as long as everything's under contract, it's, it's all good. It's still, well, it's still okay. Yeah. All right. Built or Say again? No, what you said there's still something hanging on out there or what? Well, they have not finalized everything yet. No, it's it's not fully under contract because there might be a, a lot change because of the, the bill they want to do. So in that case but, I mean Yeah, in that case, until you get under contract, everything's negotiable and the buyer because in some of those situations uh, when they advertise, it says it must close by a certain time. And so they do it mm -hmm. only they know they're finishing. And so you do need to, um, at this point, redo the contract and, and uh, make sure every, everything's updated in this and your buyer's agency agreement and then get yeah. them to rebook that. So it could be a change. Okay. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But what you know what they were doing at one time was just offering it on houses that's finished or sitting just to get rid of inventory but right now they literally go in and start a new sector and they've added twenty thousand dollars to the home prices and they built it all in mm -hmm. because that helps mm -hmm. sell homes, buying down interest rates uh, but i really think we're fixing to see some dropped interest rates uh, a little bit the market's already dropping somewhat so uh, you know, the mortgage market's anticipating on what the feds are going to do if they drop or whatever. So they've already kind of dropped a little bit. So if feds don't drop come September, rates will bounce up a little bit. But if they drop, we may not see any price drops in the interest rate market because it's already adjusted, anticipating uh, fed changes. So, and we may see a tick down or whatever. So uh, anyway, but it's... Uh, yeah, with that contract being out or still pending, we do you do need to get everything done on the new forms and formats and stuff. So uh, I haven't seen okay. what, um, um, Horton's doing. I mean, we're looking at our contracts because I've got a couple of builders contracts that we're going to change to make sure they're in full compliance. But uh, I'm sure Horton's adjusted and everybody's doing it. So because they've got real estate companies, so they've got to make sure. They're all in compliance. So, anybody else? No. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Tell so me. What Linda was saying, she's saying back to what that conversation with the new construction. She said do the brokerage fee disclosure. 
So there's a, Linda, did you say there's a broker fee amendment? Yeah, there is a brokerage fee disclosure amendment to the buyer agency agreement. Jesus Christ. So I would have to go in there and put 5% saying that the buyer agrees to compensate for 5% of the new Where is that? I don't see it. It's on A. It's, it's, you're, right below, you're right below it. The A line. Is this fee disclosure addendum? No, no this is an amendment. Well, where's the amendment? I don't know. I printed it out from somewhere. Look under um, hmm. other forms. Oh, maybe other forms. I don't know. I don't know where I got it, but I got it. I was into that. No, that's that addendum. You get your buyer's agency. All right. It should be under the B's. Under the beach B. Yeah, I don't see it anywhere. So, yeah. Give it Chris and you'll upload that. I mean, really, to me, if you take the buyer's agency agreement and go back and get them to initial it and okay, get probably do the same thing. Yeah. So, uh, but I'll get this to Chris. I, I know I got it out of the library somewhere, but yeah. we'll get it in the right place. Hey, if y'all want to make this, y'all talked about, just make sure you send Linda some of the special glasses and she can. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a question for Linda. Yes, ma'am. Hey, um, I am, I have my personal home. I'm the listing agent as well as the seller. And you say I need to do a whole new listing agreement? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm sorry you do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was the I missed it. They were goofing off in class, so. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it was Tony. He was goofing off. What was the question? Oh, I told her I was the um, listing agent as well as the seller. Did I need to fill out a whole new uh, listing agreement? And she said yes. And you're, yeah. yeah, on your house. Did you get a contract on it? Huh? Did you get a contract on it yet? No, I have not. Okay. All right. Nobody, nobody's getting contracts over there. Yeah. Well, I've seen a couple down in my neighborhood that's under contract, but they're a little bit lower, like I said. But um, I'm kind of mm -hmm. like that last sector built over the bridge and the prices they're in, they're not helping a whole lot of people. So, nope. They're cheap compared. Yeah, they are. But, you know, I was in um, Tampa Bay this weekend, and we went to uh, – where was that place? Uh, it's called the Hyde Park Village, and it reminded me a lot of what they're fixing to do with you guys up there with the shopping, and I've ridden by, and I'm like, man, what's that thing – the shopping kicks in up there, I think your price mm -hmm. is going to go up. And so uh, just a great draw. And that, that was a gorgeous place. Luckily, my, our wives didn't spend any money there and just had all the shops and stuff <laughs> in the neighborhood. So, but, uh, but it's pretty cool. I think once that's in, I think it really upgrades you guys quite a bit. So, but also know that yeah. your house, your new home is going to be finished before that one. So, uh, October 18th. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's pray. That's my close date. <laughs> yeah. All right. We've been a little bit, I've been a little bit long witted. Good Lord. Two hours. Mm -hmm. Our Barbie here is telling me it's time to go. And a lot of people have gotten off. So, all right, we're going to end it. And then um, y'all call us if you have any other questions. And then next week we'll, we'll do some other training, kind of do some brush ups because a lot of this is kind of um, live and learn. Early September, we're doing a app retrain, no, another okay. app training. Okay. They've got some updates, so they're going to introduce. So we've got some trainings for our new apps and some stuff for websites coming up and stuff. So, uh, hey, and life's good. Well, I think we've added two or three agents this week. Yeah. So, so life's good. Yeah. Going sales are way up. So, uh, Linda's actually having to do some work. All these <laughs> files going on. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah, so you don't like to, y'all slow this business down. So uh, anyway. No, keep it coming.
ma'am. Keep it coming. Yeah, keep it coming. All right, thank you guys, and sorry to take Thank you, up. Randy. A lot to cover. Y'all call us if you need. Well, Linda, can thank I give you. you a call? I got another question for you. Yes, ma'am. Just give me a buzz. Okay. Thanks. Right. Okay. Bye. -bye. Okay. I'm glad that worked. I had to get this little piece.